It may be the middle of summer, but there is still plenty of lacrosse to talk about. The Cannons are back from their all-star break, and with just five games left, they will look to make a playoff push. We will look back at the highlights from their season to date and talk with all-star goalie Tyler Fiorito and co-captain Josh Hawkins. The Mass Bay Select Championship games were held at Harvard in June, and we were there. Plus, Coach Quirk's coaching tip this week will help you improve your shooting. All this is coming up next on Cannons Full Contact. What's going on everyone? Welcome to Cannons Full Contact. I'm Margo McCauley and I'm joined as always by former Boston Cannons defender Jack Reed. It seems like it's been forever since the Cannons were last on the field. Yeah, we haven't seen them on the field since June 22nd thanks to a bye week then the MLL All-Star break. But they are back in action tomorrow night against the Rochester Rattlers. It's a little more than halfway through the season, but with the break in the action, we figured it would be a great time to revisit the season so far for the Cannons. Things haven't gone as well on the field record-wise. Wins and losses, not where they want to be, but that doesn't mean there haven't been plenty of highlights through nine games. Let's take a look back. Manny skips it to Balestri, hands free, and he scores! Kyle Balestri with the game winner in Florida. Shot throw, but Manny is knocked away. Here's another opportunity and a goal. Josh Hawkins just made hey, with his first goal of the season, not known as an offensive threat. Inside and a goal! Davey Avalon, the face-off win. The sea ball the former Lizard with a shot and a goal. How about that, Manny? Oh, beautiful! Will Manny's got a goal inside, saved by Fiorito. Ever since then, it's been all cannon. Game runs. Turry scores! Justin Turry has given Boston the lead. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Bluster with the drive, turns, shoots, score. Boy. And here comes Dardella with a goal. Now the center alley, look out. Jackson, a beauty. Kyle Jackson, Perkovic with a score. Sergio, his second goal in a Cannons uniform. The Cannons sit at 3-6 and six as they head into this weekend's action, but three of those six losses have been by one goal, with two of them coming in overtime. Individual bright spots in the first half have been Davey Emela, who was among the MLL leaders with 25 goals, and fellow attacker Kyler Ballistri, who's having a strong second season in Major League Lacrosse with 27 points in seven games so far. If the Cannons are going to make a playoff push in their final five games, they'll need to do it without a familiar face. At the trade deadline on June 27th, Boston traded its leading scorer and one of the faces of the franchise, Will Manny, to the New York Wizards as part of a four-player trade that saw the Cannons acquire midfielders Dave Lawson and Chris LaPierre. Lawson scored 32 goals for the Lizards in 2016 after spending three seasons with Rochester, where he netted 63 in 34 games for the Rattlers. LaPierre is a defensive midfielder who is in his fourth season in the league out of the University of Virginia. Here is what Coach Quirk had to say the day after the trade on LAC Sports Network. We're certainly still in the playoff hunt. We're a game and a half out of that last playoff spot right now. So our main goal is to continue to win games and make the playoffs in 2017. So with this trade, bringing Dave Lawson and Chris LaPierre, we felt that that would give us you know, an extra punch at the midfield with Dave and certainly Chris as a transition guy, a great deep midi, very athletic. But obviously losing Will is tough, um, but we feel it's a position that we're putting ourselves in to contend for a championship this year and down the road. Coming off the break, the Cannons have five games left in the season, beginning tonight in Rochester, followed by road games in New York and Charlotte, before they finish the season with a two-game homestand against Florida and Atlanta. The Cannons already hold wins over the Lizards and launch this season, and will need to go on a run over the final part of their schedule to get into playoff contention. Cannons co-captain Josh Hawkins joining us now to talk a little bit about the season. So we just looked at what you guys have left, but before we get to that, how do you feel about the first half of the season? First half of the season was was interesting. Uh, you know, a couple close losses, uh, you know, trying to work out uh, the roster moves at the beginning of the season, obviously with the NLL and the college transition, those players coming in, trying to find our nucleus, find our core. Um, it probably took us that full half of the season, the better teams. It, it takes, you know, three or four games. 
Um, it took us a little bit longer, but we're starting to figure it out now. So, Hawk, to stay in playoff contention, obviously winning is going to be important. Yeah. What's going to be key for you guys in the back half of the season to having the success you want to have? Stay healthy, you know, stay hungry, and, uh, you know, believe that, you know, we can still, we're still in this thing. I think that's the, the biggest thing. If you look at last year and, you know, the seven teams ending uh, all tied for first place, really we're not out of this. You know, you might look at our record and, you know, we're second to last or last in the league, but, uh, you know, we still have a shot at this thing. So quick turnaround after, uh, you know, this, this break that we just had. Um, we got five games coming up, four in I think like 14 days or something like that. So uh, a double header. Uh, it, it's all very important. So we got to, you know, just continue to believe that we can finish this thing out. Going to be a tough stretch. Now, we don't normally get to talk to a player on Cannon's full contact. So we got to ask, what's it like in the locker room amongst the guys, knowing you're three and six and you kind of have to win out to have a chance to be in the playoffs? You know, that, that last conversation we had after the Ohio loss, uh, overtime loss, which hurt, was, you know, keep communicating through the, throughout the week because we're all, all over the country doing different things. So continue to c communicate in that break. Uh, and you know, continue to work on the little things, getting in the, uh, into the weight room, um, and then getting on the wall, and, and keeping your sticks fresh, and, and you know, going out and taking the time to shoot and do the things to, to continue to prepare for the back half of the season. Still to come on Cannon's Full Contact, Boston goalie Tyler Fiorito is the subject of our player profile. We will also look back at the Mass Bay Select Championship Games held at Harvard in June as part of Mass Bay Youth Lacrosse's 25th anniversary. And Coach Quirk will be here with his coach's tip. So stay with us. We're on to you, diabetes. Time's up insufficient prenatal care. And administrative paperwork, your days of drowning people are numbered. Same goes for you, budget overruns. And rising costs. Wipe that smile off your face. We're coming for you too. For those who won't rest until the world is healthier, neither will we. Optum, how well gets done. Welcome back to Cannon's Full Contact. I'm Margo McCauley and I'm joined as always by former Cannon star Jack Reed. Mass Bay Youth Lacrosse is one of the biggest youth lacrosse organizations in the country, representing over 150 towns in the state. The highlight of their year is a jamboree, which is held in Devons, Massachusetts, with about 450 teams participating over two weekends in June. It's a great event, which we showcased last year on Full Contact. So this year, we decided to take a look at another MBYLL sponsored event, which took place at Harvard Stadium last month to celebrate their 25th anniversary. Prior to the Cannons game on June 3rd, MBYLL hosted the championship games in four of their select divisions in the U13 and U15 age groups. Cannons Full Contact was there to document all of the action that night, and that's the focus of this week's Trimino Community Spotlight. You know, a lot of it you start off as your kids playing and you're a dad and you want to bond with your kids and then it grows and you say, wow, look at all these kids having a great experience. When you see that and you see them having just kids being kids, you want to get more involved. You want to help them make it great. 1992, six towns on the South Shore started Mass Bay Youth Lacrosse League and their, their formula and their philosophy was fairly simple. Get as many kids playing, uh, balanced teams, equal playing time, no pressure, just learn to love this game, teaching first. And in 25 years, they've grown to become the largest lacrosse league in the United States, one of the most important leaders in terms of what's happening at the youth level. And we've tried everything we can to kind of stick to that formula. We've always tried to stay consistent to that first message of teach the game, grow the game, honor the game. And that's been consistent for 25 years. We're totally focused on the youth level. We want more boys and girls playing the sport in every town. If we do a great job at the youth level, we know that everything else will happen. Meaning that you'll have, you know, if you have a great high school program or a great youth program, you're going to have a great high school program. You're going to feed into colleges, Division One, Two, II, or Three. You're going to feed into post collegiate stuff, and you're going to feed into the MLL eventually. The most important thing we do is coaches training. What's really important about that is we recognize that most of these coaches, almost all of them, are volunteers, and so. They have a tremendous impact on whether the, the boys and girls stay in the sport. The way I end every coaching clinic that we had this year is, is I always tell them, listen, there's three adults on the field. You, the other head coach, and the referee. Make sure you act like it. You're the role model for these kids. Anything you're doing or saying, these kids are going to watch you. So please make sure that whatever you're doing is just being you know, a model citizen for these kids 
to honor the game and how it was intended and invented. And so we kind of said as a given, you know, we need a baseline level of training. And so we kind of all agreed across the league that we're going to have some level of training for every coach so we kind of understand what the mission, the philosophy is, how to coach kids, and then quite frankly reaching out to other lacrosse organizations that can help us deliver better, higher quality training, again, for the youth kids. Kevin, stay low! That's it, Kevin! It's part of life. I mean, you've got different backgrounds, you know, different uh, town makeups. Some are towns, some are cities, big, small. You've got all walks of life, but they all come together for lacrosse, which is what you want. Mass Bay does a really good job of, uh, you know, the diversity of it and respecting the people's differences. And you'll even see it. Like, we come from Newton's a wealthier town. We'll play some other towns that aren't as wealthy. And, you know, there might be some chippiness there, but by the end of the game, you know, the coaches are friends, they're laughing, and the, the kids know each other, which is great. I think it's just, again, it's, it's giving back to the community. You can do a lot of things. You can get involved in your church, in your synagogue, with the homeless, whatever. Here's an opportunity for moms and dads to kind of give back to their community locally, you know, to the team or at the local town level or, quite frankly, at the state or league level and really try to have an impact on young kids. And I think that's a fantastic opportunity. And if we do it well, then, you know, there are a lot of, uh, you know, soft rewards that come with that. We believe in the proverb, a higher tide raises all ships. And any time we can get towns who are normally opponents on the field to get together off the field and say, I want to help you become the best program you can be. I don't think you get that in a lot of other sports. I don't think you get that in a lot of other youth organizations. The idea of let's come together and create one large community by helping each other. And that's something that uh, is one of the reasons why I keep coming back. Our ultimate goal is to eventually get these kids to pass it on to the next generation to come back, coach for their town that they grew up in. We have a ton of coaches now who are about turning 40 and they were around in the original 1992 days and here they are again giving back. And I look around and I see not just a lot of future players but a lot of future coaches and town leaders for sure. Congratulations to MBYLL on their 25th anniversary and all they've done to grow the sport in Massachusetts. Margo, I still have vivid memories of my first Jamboree games going way back to a younger and slightly smaller Jack Reed. It's a wonderful <laughs> opportunity for teams from across the state to get together and play and enjoy the game with each other. Look the same just without the beard, <laughs> I'm sure. Still to come here on Cannon's Full Contact, we spend some time with Boston goalie Tyler Fiorito and Coach Quirk brings you his latest coaching drill, so stay tuned. It's not normal. It's not routine. It doesn't do usual, or run of the mill, or typical. It doesn't have speeds, or limits, or restrictions. It's refreshingly simple, but it's never ordinary. Trimino, protein never tasted so good. And a nice save by Fiorito. Oh, my goodness. Inside. What a save by Fiorito. Oh, what a save. Are you kidding me? You just got to look at Cannon's goalie Tyler Fiorito in action. Since joining Boston in a trade with Chesapeake prior to last season to take over when Jordan Burke retired, he has played in every single game between the pipes for the Cannons. Tyler is a four-time All-American at Princeton, and after two years serving as backup with the Bayhawks, has become one of the top goalies starting in Major League Lacrosse. Let's get to know Tyler a little bit better in this week's player profile. Nice inside. What a save by Fiorito. That was special by Tyler Fiorito. As a goalie in this game, it's a very special position. You're kind of on, a, on an island out there. I think as I've kind of played now in goalie, I'm 27 years old. I played, you know, really for the last 15, 16 years. You kind of start to see all the shots that you think. And then you see guys that surprise you. I can remember, you know, my first time playing Cornell in my freshman year. You know, Max Seabold had probably one of the hardest shots I've ever faced. I mean, the ball went 50 yards past me and never, like, peaked. So, again, it's never easy to see somebody winding up, but, you know, again, your preparation. You stand tall, um, you're always in your ready position, and, and you, and you kind of react and try and prevent the ball from going in. Outside, oh, what a 
save by Fiorito. That was magic. We moved to Baltimore when I was, you know, five years old, and we were playing baseball. And my next door neighbor uh, were the Will brothers, and they played at UNC, six foot four midfielders. They walked over and said, hey, "You're playing the wrong sport. We don't do that here." I was five years old and worked my way up. And as I moved into, you know, middle school, they kind of needed a goalie too, and that's kind of how I hopped in K's. So again, my neighbors got me in, involved, and you know, the rest is kind of history. As you kind of grow up, uh, you'd be amazed. You're in, in middle school and you have high school guys shooting. And you know, you're still scared when they, when they pull the ball back and, and, and rip it hard and you always see goalies kind of shrink in a little bit. I think for me, and, and, and being a lacrosse goalie is a little different from other um, sports because in lacrosse, you know, you see 20 shots a game or, or more. In this league, it's you know, 35, 40 shots. You're giving up you know, 12, 14 goals a game and you know, a short-term memory is, is really key. And if you let one in that you think, you know, you, you wish you had back, you always have another chance coming up where you can steal one from the other team. One thing I can do is uh, if, if they have confidence in me, they're going to play better. That's the big thing for my teammates. Not only are they there to kind of rally me when I give up a goal and I look down, but I think even more so, they help me be a better goalie by you know, forcing the other team to, to positions on the field where uh, I, I prefer to see a shot, you know, down the alley, lower angle shots versus directly to the middle. If they think, even if they get beat, they have me back there to back them up, uh, you know, they'll play better. The same thing is in my, my trust in them. If I'm comfortable that they're going to give up shots where I'm comfortable seeing them, you know, I'm going to have a better game. It's always a, a game of, you know, angles and also percentages. And I think if we can force them to take shots where, you know, the, the angle is much smaller and I have a higher percentage chance of making a save, that's, that's, that's key for me. And that's how my teammates can really make me better. Oh, there it is. Oh, I'm gonna, I'll wait on it. I'm getting old. I mean, you see some of the guys, they're like, I watched you play at MetLife Stadium in, in middle school. And when I was in sixth grade, I was like, geez. You know, I still feel like I'm one of the younger guys in the league. When you see guys like, you know, Paul Rabel, Westervelt uh, is a great player. Mundorf just retired. So, um, you know, some of the guys that I kind of looked up to are now kind of retiring. And, you know, now I'm becoming that next veteran. This is my, you know, fifth real season. Um, playing and uh, I think it's taken a lot more preparation not just mentally but also physically to get my body ready um, throughout the week to, to be able to play Friday Saturday while well, I enjoy to have my fun it's you know I, I'm always looking to get you know the next step in my life and, and learn more and uh, prepare myself for when I'm older so I, I work in finance in New York City it's fast-paced you know I'm up at five o'clock every morning um, and, and I work from six to six. So again, there's not a whole lot of time. I, I try and multitask, but I'm, I'm a pretty organized person and I'm pretty goal oriented and you can kind of see that in, uh, when I'm on the field and um, I kind of cut down on you know, a lot of the things that take up more time. I'm pretty efficient, so it's kind of who I am. You know, this is a full-time you know, gig here with, with the Cannons. Every weekend, five months, it's, it's commitment through, through the whole season. As Jack mentioned earlier, Tyler was one of the best college goalies in the country while at Princeton, earning All-America honors four times and being named the Ivy League Player of the Year as a senior. After four seasons in Chesapeake, he became the Cannon starting goalie prior to the 2016 season, and he has started every game for Boston since joining the team. Okay, now Jack, you were an all-star defender back when you used to play, so tell me a little bit about the communication between a goalie and the defenders in front of him. Well, it's pretty simple, Margo. Without communication, the goalie doesn't get to see the shots he'd prefer to see. What Tyler's really doing back there is directing the players in the slide packages, trying to essentially set the offense up for its lowest probability. Okay, well one situation where that has to be key is in man down, so let's take a look at Tyler kind of directing those guys. Lead us through this. So we've got the cannons here in a man down situation versus the lizards. We're going to see the lizards working the ball around the screen a little bit, and eventually they're going to start settling into an attacking position. So we've got five cannons defenders involved in the play, and they've got to cover up for the fact that they're down one. Tyler's, of course, keeping the crease locked down as much as possible, but the ball itself spinning around the outside is going to force some rotations. We're going to see one up this backside here leaving the back pipe open. And there's going to be a collection of movements that Tyler's really orchestrating from inside the crease to try to make that all possible. And as a fan watching, you may not know any of that is happening, but really it's all because of him that he's able to see that ball and make that safe. Without a doubt. Okay, let's look at some other examples of uh, Tyler playing some, some good goalie in cage. And here's one where uh, I know he, he makes a really brilliant save. Walk us through this. Well, it's a perfect example of wanting to see the shot he wants to see. 
rather than a cross cage pass that could lead to a blind shot for him, he's watching the ball all the way down the side. Lower angles, controlling the opportunity to shoot on the net a little bit. And it's really, it's not a uh, easy save by any means, but it's a quality opportunity for him to step in. And any guy who's playing goalie in this league has to be brave with guys diving at you like that. I think uh, one of the toughest positions to play without question. And last but not least, take us through this. What happens here in this play? It's a perfect example of the goalie is the last line of defense. We've got Landis out here. He's pushing out. He's trying to create an opportunity, put the ball on the ground. When that fails, there's a pretty good scoring opportunity that Tyler bails the cannons out of. He does that quite often, especially against the defending champs. They do move the ball pretty darn well. Let's take a look here. Landis trying to make a play on the ball. Truly really this cross crease feed. That's just an unbelievable save. Could you do that? <laughs> Wouldn't want to. I absolutely could not do that. Shout out to Tyler, all star this season, having a brilliant year for the Cannons. Hope he continues in the back half of the year. Coming up next, Coach Quirk will bring us the Kyocera coaching tip with this week's focus on shooting. We're on to you, diabetes. Time's up insufficient prenatal care. And administrative paperwork, your days of drowning people are numbered. Same goes for you, budget overruns. And rising costs. Wipe that smile off your face. We're coming for you too. For those who won't rest until the world is healthier, neither will we. Optum, how well gets done. It's not normal. It's not routine. It doesn't do usual, or run of the mill, or typical. It doesn't have speeds, or limits, or restrictions. It's refreshingly simple, but it's never ordinary. Trimino, protein never tasted so good. Welcome back to Cannon's Full Contact. Each episode, head coach Sean Quirk shares with us a drill for players and coaches alike that will help them improve their game. So far, we focused on stick handling, dodging, warming up the goalie, and face-off play, to name a few. This week, we shift our attention to shooting. Here's Coach Quirk with the latest installment of our Kyocera Coaches Tip. Coach Quirk here. Today we're going to be working on our shooting. First shooting drill is our step down shooting. A coach or a player will be feeding the ball and the coaching points to this drill are step down shooting, hands up and away from the body, stepping with your opposite foot and directing the ball towards the cage. The communication aspect is key as well. The player's calling for the ball. Notice the foot movement, getting a little bit of a, a hop step crow hop step as well and letting the ball go. Okay, now we'll work on our shooting and dodging from behind. Our attackmen and midfielders will dodge from behind the cage. As mentioned in previous episodes of Cannon's Full Contact, split dodge, face dodge, and roll dodge. Our players will exhibit those dodges as well as finishing in tight shots. Notice the players are getting high and away from the crease and finishing in tight. Again, foot movement, change of direction, and finishing is critical in shooting in tight. Players at all levels can work on shooting, whether it be short sticks or long poles, going to the cage, getting the arms up and away from the body. If we're in tight and a defender on us, we're finishing in tight with a tight shot. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. We will be back on August 5th with show number 7. Till then, Margo, keep your chin straps buckled. Your head on a swivel. And your sticks in the ready position, folks. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.